Hello and welcome to another edition of Coffee Talk with Immigration Attorney Brian D. Lerner. In this set of videos we are talking about E1 and E2 visas. Uh, one of the important points is uh, the nationality of the corporation. Uh, you're going to be starting essentially a new business in the United States uh, whether it's a branch office or whether it's a new business the nationality of that corporation is critically important into the ultimate success of the E1 or E2. Now, at least 50% of the stock owned by nationals must be from the treaty country. So if you come from Taiwan, that means if a company is opened here, at least 50% of the stock must be from a Taiwanese national. Uh, if you come from the Philippines, at least 50% from the Philippines. Um, now there there are joint ventures that are available but again uh, you do need to keep that 50 percent uh, threshold in mind uh, I personally like to make it 51 percent um, because then there's no question who owns the majority share of the company now when the foreign corporation is the owner of the US entity then the nationality of the foreign corporation is determined by its owners not the place of incorporation or the location of the company's business. So if you know you're you have a corporation in the UK but everybody in the UK uh, is a national of China uh, who owns this corporation then it's not a UK corporation as far as the E1 or E2 is concerned. So you do need to check that if that's if you know it's going to be a branch office here in the US. Um, now if it is a publicly traded company, and we're talking obviously a big, big company, then the firm's nationality is presumed to be uh, that of the country in which the firm's stock is physically listed and traded on the stock exchange. Now, lawful permanent residents from the treaty country who own stock in the U.S. company cannot have their stock counted when determining the nationality of the country. So what you need to look at are citizens of the particular country, not residents. If you're only a resident, uh, you're not going to qualify. Uh, now, uh, dual nationals holding U.S. citizenship and treaty nationality are also disqualified. Can't be a U.S. citizen. Uh, you have to be only a citizen of the treaty country in order to qualify. Uh, now. Let's say that a company is equally owned and controlled by two different treaty countries um, of which the employees are different nationalities, but each nationality is with a country who has a treaty with the U.S., uh, then both would be able to obtain e-visas to come to the United States. Now, in order to employ persons from the treaty country, as stated, at least 50% of the corporation must be owned by persons having the nationality of the treaty country um, who are maintaining E status uh, if residing in the U.S. or if not residing in the U.S. would be classifiable as E non-immigrants. Uh, so keep that in mind uh, when you are making the E visa. Um, the status is critically important to determine uh, that it comes from the proper country. Okay, more on the coming videos.